So that brings us to Colin with an yet to be determined question, at least that's what my list says. All right. Uh, it's very tempting to ask, is a hot dog a sandwich? But I'll <laughs> actually go in a different direction. Um, I am working on some user research right now uh, where we're trying to do some stuff that's important but not urgent. It's some cross-training initiatives through our organization. We're trying to figure out how to motivate people to do that more effectively. And one of the things that we're learning through this user research is that there's a lot of folks who want to be doing this, but they have so many other things that get in the way that it's hard for them to do it. And so I feel like just creating more incentives to do the training is not going to be able to really move the needle. And so I wanted to ask from a behavioral design perspective, what are some techniques that are helpful for being able to get folks to stop doing stuff or to clear out space to get rid of barriers proactively? Um, so I'm thinking about not just doing more of desired actions, but maybe mitigating undesired actions, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, and sometimes the scope boils down to, to triggers. Of course, we know the Alcalysis framework and white hat is you feel good, but there's no urgency and there's, uh, and there's black hat that creates urgency, right? And so this is a typical standard like literature type question because, um, you know, a lot of times we want to do things that are important, but not urgent, which usually are the white hat activities and, you know, improving yourself, training and growth when there's no urgent need, right? Because it's not just self-improvement. If there's an urgent need, that means if you don't do it, you'll feel miserably, you'll have consequences and it goes back to loss and avoidance, black hat. So usually even general, general self-improvement is a white hat component, which means again, there's no urgency. And, and the thing is that, well, how do we get pe people to do more of this? And it's hard to do it because always surrounding them are these black hat triggers, right? They are, they are the deadlines and then there's the uh, the scarcity, the exclusive, you know, you have to do this in the next two hours for the opportunity, whatnot, or it's very exclusive, you feel special or unpredictability, it's actually more interesting. So I think I talked about one point uh, before probably with Michael is there's two scenarios of one is just that you absolutely just have zero time to do uh, the important things, right? It's just a, almost a mathematical problem. You just don't have that, that many hours. You have to do the things you need immediately. And after that, you have zero time. Uh, and then there are questions about, okay, how to reprioritize your time, which is, you know, it's just about uh, motivating them to do more of this. And, and so theoretically, if the problem is you want them to do white hat activities, but there's too many black hat triggers, there's only two ways to, uh, to resolve that. Number one is to remove the other black hat triggers. And the, num and the second one is to add black hat triggers to the white hat activity. So uh, the first one is literally, uh, you know, whatever, identify all the triggers and remove them. And this is why I think I mentioned, if you've been in so many life coaching sessions that I feel like a lot of spiels you just already observed. So a lot of this might just be reminders. Uh, but so that's why some people like, for instance, go to the beach, go to the dojo, go to the mountains, turn off their phones. And it's so it's like, hey, I don't want any of those black hat triggers. No reminder of something exciting. No, like, oh, you got to do this really fast or not even being aware of, uh, of uh, something that an opportunity that might, come and go. So, so one is removing this. Then the second is pretty standard adding, adding the black hat core job saying like, Hey, this thing, you know, people don't want to do it because they think they can take forever to do it. And so if you can make them feel like, well, you don't have forever, or even, even um, it's like, Hey, if you miss this time, you're going to have to wait six months or whatnot it tends to create that scarcity aspect. Um, as you uh, might be aware one of the big uh, op promotions is the uh, the annual plan right the annual plan is a, is a quite big discount on annual plan and and we do run it uh, basically twice a year so i mean hopefully that's that's clear and that's transparent but we run it twice a year right so so in the middle of the year and the end of the year um, and even and and um, so even though i think some people know that hey if i miss this one if i don't jump on this because we do we do only allow people to sign up for three days. So we have, we say three days, we probably have a grace period because it's usually Wednesday to a Friday. We have a grace period, like if they do like it on Saturday or, or sometimes even early Sunday, we just kind of, we don't, we don't shut it down, but you know, we, we do say that, hey, we open it for Wednesday to Friday. So that's creates the, hey, you have these three days to do it, scarcity. And, and if they've seen these promotions a lot, like every six months they say, they know that, hey, six months away, 
But six months is a time period where people feel like, wow, that is that is a tangible loss in a sense. And I don't want to wait. If it's like, hey, this will this will run every every month, even then some people might just be uh, might be like, oh, I'll just wait. I'm too busy these these two weeks. So let's just wait for a month. Now, every environment is different. Some environments waiting for a month is torture. So you see a lot of games where it's like, hey, here's this exclusive skin and you have like one day pro one day promotion and then you won't get it for at least a month. And for some games, a month is a very long time. So that's the scarcity uh, component. And you know, you, I think it's just important to think about if there are consequences, if there are, if it's not done. Then there's like, we all know this big thing, the CD5-7 combo. If a lot of other people are doing it and they're making it sound like a great thing, then it, number one, there's reinforcing of the CD5, but then there's also the curiosity. Um, and so one example, um, yeah, I think I made a video. Yeah, I made a case video about that. So that's the Nava Orbicle uh, video in, in the case jungle. So that one I talked about how it was a gamified, very explicit gamified solution to motivate sales staff to go knock door to door, door to door and retail stores mm -hmm. as their customers. Because I think a gamification solution that are within a company should be optional. Like if you force people to, to do it, it people have more resistance. So I usually like many projects, even the funny fire one with the Kaija bank at the beginning, not everyone wanted to participate, right? Some people's like, well, I'm too busy on my job. I have all these other KPIs deadlines, right? I have these black hat things I have to deal with. I don't want to play a game or this looks like a childish thing. I don't want to do it. But then because the design was interesting, intricate, people start seeing other coworkers talk about it. They seem to be really happy. And so over time, uh, for Nava Orbicle, I remember, I think it's 99.7% of people started participating. The only person who didn't was a, was a woman on pregnancy leave. And then, um, and then one person even who had a, took a sick day asked if he could still log into this, to, to his uh, admin portal for his gamified experience. Uh, and, then, and then the funny fire one, the Kaija Bank one, I think they said uh, at the beginning it was, it was only 15% participation. And then this one was more extrinsic. This is, I think, number one, they did say people have fun and talk about it, but they also saw Coker's winning some kind of a, like reward, like a coffee maker or a TV. And then it's like, well, why wouldn't I do it? So uh, they sign up to it. But yeah, so so technically, I believe to, to really accomplish that, get people to focus on the white hat things is to add black hat to that way, or if you have find a way to remove the other triggers. Um, and I don't know the environment well enough to, to identify what those are, but that's where you would start to identify things. Excellent. Thank you. That's helpful. Great.